Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, and thank you for stopping by the channel. Now, I've got a really interesting pattern for you today. This one I got from a book recommended by Jim McCutcheon. This is called Fishing the Nymph by Jim Quick. Now, this book was published in 1960, and Jim Quick had a couple of other books out there published in the 50s, but I couldn't really find much information about him, and I certainly couldn't find any information about the fly I'm about to tie. This one is called the Destroyer Nymph. So I'm gonna consider this a largely forgotten fly. There's nothing out there online about it. The only place at all I've seen it is in this book. So a little bit more about this book. This is one of these books that, well, this one is more of a, a fishing book than a tying book, but it's quite challenging to tie patterns from something like this. If you've ever tried, I mean, you're looking at black and white hand-drawn pictures with an archaic recipe that half the time you don't even know what the abbreviations are talking about. So it's kind of challenging to take a book like this and just envision really what the fly is supposed to look like and then trying to create it. So that's what I'm going to do today with the Destroyer Nymph. And this one caught my attention really because of the name. It has a pretty cool sounding name. And then when I read the recipe, it's got an orange body and then some yellow hackles. So I thought, hey, this is going to be a kind of cool looking fly. Now, it's not a hard pattern at all to tie. The hardest thing about it was just envisioning what it's supposed to look like from this old hand-drawn black and white picture and then converting it into, you know, a real fly. But that's one of the cool things about, you know, researching and digging up these old patterns. We're kind of just plucking this fly from obscurity. There are no videos, no literature out there on this. So we're kind of recreating it for a whole new generation of fly tires to say, wow, the Destroyer Nymph, that's pretty cool. I think I want to try that. And it is pretty fun to tie. It's really cool looking. I think you're going to like it. Let's give it a shot. So there's one in the vise, a Destroyer Nymph. Now one thing I'm going to do differently is I think it needs a little bit bigger of a tail. So I'm tying this on a size 12, a 2X long nymph hook, and I'm using black 70 denier UTC. I'll put a base down all the way to the start of the bend. Now the javelina or wild boar for the tail calls for three fibers, and I think three was just not enough. So I'm gonna put about 10 or so in my stacker right here and see how this turns out. I think this is gonna be just a little bit better. Now if you don't have wild boar or javelina, just use bucktail, uh, anything, maybe moose would, would be good. So I'm just gonna catch these in right here couple turns, take a look at them. Now this wild boar is not hollow, so it does not uh, flare out like, you know, deer hair will. But I'm gonna leave the front up there and then just use this as part of the underbody. And when I get up there to where the front of my body is gonna be, go ahead and snip these coarse fibers off. And it looks like I missed one or two there, that's okay. So let's take our thread back and then catch in the next component, which is gonna be our wire rib. Gold wire, this is size brassy. You could use a medium, you could probably go to a small. It does give it a little bit of segmentation. I don't think it's for weight, but it gives a little bit of segmentation and it will hold this peacock curl we're about to tie in as a wing case, it'll help hold that in. So take five or six strands of peacock curl, and we're gonna use, use it twice. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So snip off this brittle part right here, and just catch this in all the way to the back. Now you could just leave it right here and use this as your wing case, but I think it's gonna look better if we have a little bit more. So what I'll do, I'll just cut this off about halfway, and then tie it in again. Try not to build too much bulk in your underbody. Um, it's okay if you do because we have a, a yarn, yarn body here, so that will hide a lot of imperfections. So now we've got about 10 strands of peacock curl that we're gonna wrap for our um, wing case. Now let's next put in our yarn. This is a three strand orange. It's actually wool, but if all you've got is synthetic, that's fine. So let's catch this in right here. I'm going to try to lay it flat. 
just fairly tight wraps but open wraps going all the way back to where we're going to start the body okay now take your thread back up to the front where we're going to end the body and remember we got a little bit of hackle up front so don't go all the way up now this yarn is a three strand it will kind of act like a thread if you need it to lay flatter spin it clockwise or counterclockwise and if you want to tighten it up into a tighter rope then you'd spin it clockwise. Okay, two wraps up here, maybe three to, to really catch that body off, catch this yarn, and go in here and snip this as close as you can get it. Maybe a couple wraps right here, so make sure that doesn't unravel on me. Now grab all your peacock girl, Try to keep them parallel to each other. You don't want them crossing over. It'll just make it look all wonky. So lay them directly over the top. Put a couple of wraps and then check our position before we snip them. How's that look? That's decent looking wing case. You don't need to over wrap it up front uh, because we are gonna lock it in with this wire. So I'm gonna go ahead and snip this off just as close as I can get it there. Now I'm gonna go straight into my wrap in this rib. One wrap right at the back and now openly spaced, fairly tight wraps going up. It'll be about four or five on this size, 12. Okay, when you get it up to the front, go ahead and catch this off with two or three tight wraps so you can spin it. And now the finishing touch, the flare for this thing, it's dyed yellow grizzly hackle. Not often you get to use this stuff, but it does kind of set it off. So I'm gonna tie it in, and this is actually a dry fly hackle, but that's okay because it's gonna be a sweat back and we're not putting an awful lot on it. So let's put two or three, I've got a little step right there, so I'm gonna to have to kind of spin some thread wraps to bury that wire. But that's okay. This is gonna work. All right, let's go ahead and cut off this butt end right here. And oh, you wanna get that as close as you can get it because it'll make a lump in your head if you're not careful. But we can probably bury it. So I've got about, oh, four inches of this yellow right here. I'm not gonna need my hackle pliers. I'm gonna take probably three, three wraps. And don't worry if it's flaring out, we'll fix that in just a minute. So I think that's gonna work right there. I'm gonna catch this in with two wraps. Second one pretty tight. And before I go reach in here to snip this off, I'm going to pull all of these back and then build my head like this. Okay, I'm starting to crowd my eye a little bit, so you wanna be careful. Just ramp it back up. And we're gonna to wanna to go pretty, you know, a good, a good size head right here. If you didn't take it all the way back like this, that hackle is gonna be sticking straight out and you want it to be swept back. So I think we got enough of those captured in. We can go ahead and snip this. Got a little bit of cleanup and a little bit, a few more wraps to make. But let's just pull these back and then keep building up this head until we're happy with it. So are those laying back, swept back enough? I think so. We got one little fiber pointing forward there that if we can't snip it, we'll just live with it. But I'm gonna go ahead and wet finish, then my head cement, and then a little bit of cleanup here, and this destroyer nymph, really, really old pattern from Jim Quick's Fishing Nymphs will be done. So a really cool looking pattern. I've never seen it anywhere other than Jim Quick's book, but um, yeah, I think I'm gonna tie up a few of these and give them a shot. So that's it, everybody. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.